I am Karen, a 42-year-old working housewife. My husband Archie runs the family farm with my in-laws. Our family consists of my husband, two teenage daughters, and my in-laws, making it a family of six. I'm also involved working in the fields from early morning, assisting with vegetable sorting and shipping until evening. I handle most of the household chores as well. Despite our efforts, my husband doesn't receive a substantial income. And honestly, life is not easy. Living in the countryside, our house is large, and my in-laws often reminds us how lucky we are to live in a such grand house for free. But there is nothing good about the house being so big, except for the fact that it's difficult to clean. Moreover, my husband frequently goes out drinking with his friends on weekends, even though farmers typically doesn't have weekends off. As a result, whenever he is knocked out with a hangover, I am left with no choice but to take over his work. With his meager salary being spent on alcohol, I consistently express my dissatisfaction to my husband, which inevitably leads to fights. I often wonder why I ended up marrying into such a family, while looking at my husband snoring. However, the reason I didn't get a divorce. Is that I had nowhere else to go. My parents passed away early, and my brother and his wife currently live in our family home. Despite this, I found solace in one small pleasure: cooking with ingredients grown by neighboring farmers. These ingredients are usually unsellable due to their unconventional appearance, but their but their taste is excellent. So I make dishes and sweets using these ingredients. And distribute them to the neighborhood. Everyone appreciates them, which gives me the strength to continue living with my difficult husband and in-laws. I have supported my husband for twenty years, reminding myself that even in the worst circumstances, we can survive here. This has been my daily life for a while, until an unexpected event occurred one day. To my surprise. A television crew came to interview us while we were working in the fields. It seemed to be a program about lunch at a farmer's house. My mother-in-law, thrilled, eagerly accepted the microphone. She then ordered me to prepare lunch and went upstairs to put on some makeup. I wiped the sweat off my bare face and prepared the table while my husband and father-in-law were being interviewed. The TV crew requested an authentic representation, so I set up the table as I usually would. I also added yesterday's homemade orange pound cake to the spread. Soon, my mother-in-law, wearing her favorite dress and bright red lipstick, appeared. Oh no! This table looks so rustic. It's embarrassing. Usually, we have a more glamorous setup. No, not at all. It's an ideal lunch with plenty of vegetables and some homemade cake. Amazing. The TV crew members certainly knew how to flatter. It might not have been their true opinion, but it made me happy. After the interview, we all gathered around the table, and the TV crews praised the food as they devoured everything. My mother-in-law. In her usual fashion, gave nonsensical explanations about the dishes. It was almost embarrassing to watch my mother-in-law trying to look that good. After all the filming was over, the TV crew started getting ready to leave. At any rate, I'm glad it all ended without incident. It was great, thank you, ma'am. As the staff members were leaving, they approached me and offered words of gratitude. Apparently, they knew from the start that it was me who prepared the food. Of course, I was happy that they ate all the food, but I was also very happy that they noticed my efforts. It warmed my heart for the first time in a long time. Half a month after the interview, the show was broadcasted on TV. Relatives and neighbors were ecstatic, and our phone kept ringing throughout the day. 
What was interesting was that most of the scenes with the husband and in-laws were cut, and the focus was on the vegetables themselves and the food. Even so, they were snickering for a while at the fact that they had appeared on TV. However, after three months after the TV appearance, my husband dropped a bombshell. I've fallen in love with someone else. So, please divorce me. Huh? I was taken aback by the unexpected confession. My mind going blank. Ignoring my speechlessness, my husband continued to talk. There is a girl who approached me at the bar. She happened to see me on TV, you know. So, you're saying you're cheating on me? I asked with a trembling voice, and my husband sighed. No, it's not like that. I mean, not yet. What do you mean? When I offered to date her, she said she couldn't be with a married man. I mean, isn't she great or what? So I want to respond to her feelings. I think it's fate. You don't you know how selfish you are? This is crazy. I was about to explode with my husband's stupid words. Then suddenly, my mother-in-law appeared and spoke up. Just get a divorce already. What? I've always thought that a woman like you doesn't suit Archie. Jealousy is ugly, you know. Give up. What? Jealousy? Plus, you're someone who can't even bear a son. It's obvious that Archie deserves a younger, obedient wife. Who can still have children? Hmm, that's right. My father-in-law, who appeared before I knew it, was grinning and nodding behind her. In utter shock, I faced my husband, who continued, "You can even take the kids with you if you want." What? I want to start with a clean slate with her. You? How dare you? I'll transfer the child support payments until they finish junior high. Even if they go to high school or college, anyway, they'll soon be married off. So, even tuition will be wasted, right? My husband arrogantly proposed the worst thing possible. Nausea overwhelmed me, and I fled from the house as if escaping. He could discard his blood-related daughter so easily. It's sickening. Sad and empty. What were the past twenty years of my life? But first, how do I explain this crazy situation to my daughters? No matter how I do it, I'm sure it will hurt my daughters. Above all, how will the three of us, my daughters and I, live from now on? Dizzy from the despairing situation, I involuntarily curled up in despair. Mom, my daughter shouted as they appeared. Oh no, did they already hear about the divorce? I'm sorry, girls. Maybe it's all my fault. I replied in a voice that sounded as if it were squeezed out on me. Then my younger daughter, with tears in her eyes, said, "Mom, no, it's not your fault. We don't need such a family. I don't care." Let's leave. My oldest daughter continued, rubbing my back. Me too. It's disgusting how Dad is excited about a younger girl. Grandma is the worst. She's been mistreating you for a long time. They don't deserve us. Let's just leave. Just the three of us. Tears welled up as I felt the support from my daughters. I felt a sense of pride, knowing that they had both grown up to be kind and resilient individuals. Yes, I must protect them at any cost. That's what I need to do as their mother. I slapped my own cheek, holding back the tears. Immediately after deciding to divorce, I contacted my older brother and his wife. They scolded me in tears. Saying they wish I had consulted with them earlier. The next morning, as I packed our belongings with the children, there was commotion outside in the yard. Curious, 
I peeked out from the veranda, and saw a young woman arguing with my husband and mother-in-law. Could that be the future bride? Just as I was thinking that, the young woman turned towards me with a demonic expression and headed my way. I instinctively took a step back, caught off guard by the force of her momentum. Is that true that you are divorcing him? I don't know what he told you, but I don't like that man at all. Oh, hey, what? I was surprised by the sudden accusation from the person I thought was my husband's affair partner. My husband and mother-in-law hurriedly approached. Hey, Emma, what are you saying? Don't you remember when you said that I was cool? I never said that. I said I was a big fan of your wife, not you. I said that so many times, didn't I? I was momentarily taken aback by the unexpected confession. Then she turned to me and started to explain. Actually, my family also runs a farm, and I help out there too. So I really admire how you can cook such a diverse range of dishes with the vegetables you've grown. I genuinely respect you, ma'am. Oh, that dishes? I prepared it, you know. My mother-in-law shamelessly throws in a lie. Then Emma glared at her. Yeah, the old lady sitting at a dining table with a face full of makeup after working in the fields. I couldn't help but burst into laughter at Emma's brutally honest remark. It just so happened that I saw your husband at the nearby table when I was out drinking with friends. So I approached him, mentioning that I'm involved in farming and that I'm a big fan of his wife. But then, yesterday, I suddenly received a message saying, "I've separated from my wife." I freaked out. Oh, so that's what it is. In other words, she's also a victim. My husband's eyes dart round, his mouth slightly agape. I'm sorry, it turned into such a situation. We have to come all the way here. No, I'm the one who should apologize. It's a bit awkward. It's okay, really. I actually wanted to separate from him anyway. Huh? It's become a good opportunity. Thank you. My husband's face is filled with surprise. To be honest, I think it's better too. He's such a loser. And speaking of which, don't you ever contact me again. Well then, wait, wait a minute, Emma. Then my eldest daughter, who had come to the scene, glared at my husband and said, "Pathetic." The next day, ignoring my husband and in-laws. We left the house. After staying with my brother and his wife for a while, we rented a small house. The divorce proceedings were also finalized. The lawyer recommended by my brother and his wife was excellent. They not only helped with the university tuition for my daughters, but also filed for compensation for the verbal abuse and malicious behavior toward me. And then, five years later. I'm running a food truck at a local farmers market in the countryside. The dishes I create using mainly vegetables are well received by the elderly, and even by vegetable-hating children. Recently, I've been getting more media coverage, and there are even customers who come all the way from the city just to eat my food. My daughters, who have safely become college and high school students, help me at the truck on Sundays. I was living busy yet fulfilling days like that, when one day, my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law suddenly appeared at my shop. Looks like business is good. I saw it on TV. My daughter has become famous, and we are proud of it. What nonsense are they spouting out on a weekday afternoon? Huh? Daughter? What kind of joke is this? If you're not buying anything, please leave. I came to pick you up today, huh? Your tired face on the TV screen. 
I knew it right away. You're asking me for help, right? If you love cooking so much, why don't you open a cafe in our house? Both my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law continue to spew convenient delusions. Years have passed, but these people haven't changed at all. Before I could respond, an employee popped her head out from the backyard. Huh? Here we go again, delusional idiot! What the hell? My ex-husband, who was about to glare at the person who insulted him, froze in shock. Emma, why are you here? Wearing the same apron as me? It's none other than Emma. Why? Because her father is my employer. They are even more stunned by this unexpected turn of events. Emma and I exchange glances and smirk. The thing is, after our divorce, I ran into Emma at the local supermarket. Laughing at the coincidence, we soon became close friends. In the meantime, Emma's parents hired me. We frequently visited each other's homes. And had home parties. Every time, my cooking received high praise from everyone. And three years ago, I decided to start my own food truck. Now I have expanded the business with franchises in other states. I even started online sales, and the business is flourishing. Thanks to the bountiful goddess you guys let go, my family is secure. Oh no, Emma. You are the goddess of good fortune to me. My ex-husband was even more dumbfounded, looking at the two of us giggling and flirting. Now is the chance to strike. By the way, Archie, I heard you fell victim to a marriage scam. Did you get your money back? Oh, oh, why would you? My ex-husband's face turns pale, his eyes darting around. You thought you could deceive me. Thinking I knew nothing, and wanted to reconcile, but too bad for you. I still have good relationships with the neighbors. When I asked them to deliver ingredients to my shop, they gladly agreed. They also tell me all about you, lots of things. And with a smile on my face, I tell them the one thing I want them to know the most. Oh, by the way, I'm remarried now. What? Th that's a lie, right? The subsequent lives of my ex-husband and in-laws were miserable. They couldn't repay their debts despite selling off everything, and now they were living and working on a remote farm. They are left with no option but to work tirelessly until their last breath. By the way, my new husband is the producer at that television station. Back then, he said it was delicious and gave me his business card as he left. Apparently, there was quite a response to my cooking, and there were even discussions about a sequel. But since we ended up divorcing, the plan fell through. However, it's now being broadcast with my current food truck. Thanks to my husband's show, my food truck's popularity skyrocketed, and the business became stable. If you live earnestly and honestly, there are people who recognize your actions. Life is not as bad as you might think. Hello, what would you like today? I continue to imagine the smiles that awaits at the end of my cooking, living in this place.